Hi, welcome to Spoiler Lab. A boy jumped into some wet cement to get the attention of a girl he liked. Things didn't go according to plan and the boy's life was put in danger. Today we will recap the story of the 2005 series Grey's Anatomy. A young patient is admitted to Seattle Grace Hospital with a serious injury that shocks the entire medical staff. The teenager's body is stuck in solidified concrete, and the boy himself miraculously survived. Orthopedic surgeon Kelly Torres decides to interview the four teenagers, who reported what happened to the patient Andy to the police only an hour later. It turns out that the boys had encouraged him to climb up to the construction site and jump into the cement. They recount the accident with laughter and tell the doctor that they didn't expect such an act from the quiet Andy. Dr. Torres tries to appeal to the conscience of the teenagers, but they do not admit their guilt and deny their friendship with the victim. Meanwhile, the head of the surgical department, Dr. Miranda Bailey, tries to figure out what to do about the unusual case. Construction workers carefully carve Andy out of the concrete mixer, taking care not to touch his body. But in order to proceed freeing the boy, they need to be given the go-ahead by the specialist. Gathering her thoughts, she tries to calm the sobbing patient and promises she will definitely find a way out. The situation is complicated by the fact that the concrete is slowly sucking the water out of Andy's body and he needs surgery as soon as possible. The doctors at Seattle Grace Hospital are confronted daily with shocking medical cases, incurable patients, and occupational powerlessness. At the same time they remain regular people and try to eliminate not only the complications of the diseases, but also the difficulties in their personal lives. Thus Meredith Gray, a general surgeon, tries to cope with the consequences of her mother's passing away by receiving psychological therapy. The young woman's unhealed trauma is affecting her relationship with neurosurgeon Derek Shepard. Having decided it's over between them, the man decides to sell the plot of land he bought for their future home. Meanwhile, a girl named Beth is admitted to the surgical ward with a brain tumor. The disease rapidly progresses and the patient can no longer move her right arm. Derek and Meredith want to put the girl on an experimental treatment program. The neurosurgeon plans to inject a live virus into the patient's tumor and thereby destroy it from within. Beth is exhausted from her destructive illness and is enthusiastic about her role as a test subject, but the girl's worried parents don't share her enthusiasm. Unfortunately, Derek reinforces their fears and informs them that the experimental program has failed to help other patients. Another clinical trial participant, Jeremy, walks into the room. The guy met Beth in a psychological support group for cancer patients and they have been bonded by fond romantic feelings ever since. The girl's parents take Meredith and Derek out of the room and tell them that they don't want the boy near their daughter. The teens have gone through chemotherapy and radiation treatments together, and Beth may not survive the loss of her boyfriend if he doesn't overcome the disease. Chief Surgeon Richard Weber arrives at a doctor's meeting to learn what their expertise is about the patient stuck in the concrete. The surgeons don't know how to proceed with the operation, because every action they take could lead to a fatal error. They report to their supervisor that heart and lung problems could bring the patient down and his limbs and internal organs might be damaged. An argument ensues between the surgeons, which is ended by the chief physician. Andy is in critical condition and they have less than six hours to get the boy out of the concrete and into the operating room. Meanwhile, surgeon Alex Karev is going through a difficult time in his personal life. Earlier, he had fallen in love with his patient Rebecca, who was saved during a ferry accident. The girl develops psychological problems because of her past and the guy is desperately trying to help the girl he loves cope with the disorder. Alex's colleague Izzy Stevens helps him look after the sick girl, but notices that the patient's condition is worsening and she begins to lose control of reality. When Rebecca and Alex are alone, the girl admits to him that she peed herself. Jeremy spends all his time before the surgery in Beth's room. He shares with the girl the sad news about the other support group members who have not been able to survive the brutal disease. The girl tries to cheer the boy up and tells him that the experimental program should definitely help them. Beth's mother is unhappy with the teenager's interaction and asks Dr. Gray to move her daughter away from the boy's room. An argument ensues between her and Beth, when suddenly Jeremy starts convulsing and falls to the floor. At this time, the construction workers, under the close supervision of the surgeons, begin gradually freeing Andy from the concrete. The boy tries to overcome his fear of not surviving, and admits to the doctors that he jumped into the concrete tank because of his friend, Lola. The other teenagers in the company brought her to the construction site to watch Andy jump, and the naive boy just wanted to impress the pretty girl. He ironically compares himself to the Star Wars character Han Solo encased in carbonite. Richard Weber informs Meredith that the review board is unhappy with the results of the clinical trial. The doctors have already lost 11 patients after injecting the live virus. If they lose one more patient, their experimental program will be shut down for good. This news leads Dr. Gray to despair. In a psychotherapy session, she talks about the personal resentment she feels toward the chief physician, Weber. Once upon a time he was her mother's lover, but he left the woman to avoid ruining his family. 
The woman believes that this event may have prompted her mother's subsequent decision to take her own life. Later, Meredith tries to convince Derek to give Beth a chance and not to deprive her of the opportunity to participate in the experimental program. She suggests that the neurosurgeon perform the girl's surgery on the same day as Jeremy. Eventually Meredith convinces Derek to bend the rules and they go off to give the good news to their patients. Beth is worried about her boyfriend, who is scheduled to have surgery in a few hours. She asks Dr. Gray to let her into Jeremy's room, but her parents are adamantly against it. The distraught girl tells Meredith that she and Jeremy are the only survivors of their group. Meanwhile, the procedure for releasing Andrew from the concrete continues. When the boy fully realizes what a ridiculous situation he's gotten himself into, he has a panic attack. To calm him down, Dr. Bailey compares the patient to his favorite character, Han Solo. She says he was brave and helped Luke Skywalker destroy the Death Star. In the end, the hero managed to get out of the carbonite with the help of his beloved Princess Leia. After her words, Andy has hope for a happy ending, and Dr. Bailey's colleagues are shocked by her knowledge of the Star Wars universe. Derek and Meredith run into Beth in the hallway, who is trying to make her own way to Jeremy's room while her parents are away. She begs the doctors to take her to her boyfriend and asks them for a small favor. The girl wants to be alone with her boyfriend so they can make love. Beth is afraid that after the operation they won't have another chance and wants to spend their last moments in each other's arms. The attending doctors agree to make concessions and help the girl clean up before meeting her boyfriend. While their patients engage in amorous pleasures, Derek and Meredith guard the door to their room and indulge in memories of their own crushes. The doctors are approached by Beth's parents, who are concerned about their daughter's sudden disappearance. Dr. Gray lies that the girl is having an MRI and takes the disturbed couple to her office. The surgeons overseeing Andy's operation notice his condition worsening. After each piece of concrete the construction workers remove, his leg swells more and more. The doctors decide to relieve the pressure in the patient's leg to save the limb. Dr. Kelly makes an incision in Andy's leg and lets the red fluid out. Rebecca's condition rapidly deteriorates. Alex catches the girl sitting in the bathtub under a stream of water. She mumbles incoherent things about her baby and barely reacts to what the guy is saying to her. Izzy is very worried about his friend and his girlfriend and tries to call them, but neither of them picks up the phone. Jeremy and Bette finish having fun and now it's time to say goodbye before surgery. With tears in her eyes, the girl tells her boyfriend that he has changed her life for the better and she is afraid of never seeing him again. Jeremy soothes her with a kiss and promises that they will have a wonderful future together. Watching the lovebirds talk, Derek and Meredith take the boy to surgery, realizing the weight of responsibility they now carry. The exhausted surgical team oversees the final stages of freeing Andy from the concrete before they take him to surgery. Dr. Bailey is concerned that they've missed something important in monitoring the boy's condition and begins listing aloud all the possible complications. Suddenly, a drink in the hand of her colleague prompts the woman to think about the patient's bladder. To keep Andy from dehydrating, doctors have been giving him fluids for four hours. The boy needs a catheter inserted urgently or his bladder will simply explode. Izzy finally manages to get hold of Alex while he prepares lunch for Rebecca. The guy moves away to another room where he can talk and rudely asks his colleague to stop interfering in his life. All of a sudden, Rebecca's groaning is heard from the kitchen and Alex runs to her, hanging up on her. Meredith and Derek prepare to operate on Jeremy. Dr. Gray is thrilled that they're going to save someone's life. Unfortunately, miracles are rare and the kid fails to survive the brain surgery. Devastated, Meredith and Derek come to Beth's room to tell her the bad news about her boyfriend. The girl becomes hysterical from his passing. Later, Derek throws a bottle of champagne in the trash that they were supposed to drink with Meredith if the clinical trial was successful. When Beth calms down, the attending physicians visit her in her room again. Having experienced their 12th loss of a patient, Dr. Shepard advises the girl not to undergo surgery. Meredith, on the contrary, tries to persuade the patient to take a risk and promises to improve the dosage of the live virus. Beth's parents no longer want their daughter to take part in the unreliable clinical trials, but the girl doesn't want to back down. She's convinced that without the experimental program, her chances of survival are zero. Besides, Jeremy would be very angry if she gave up. Dr. Torres comes out of the operating room and summons Lola. She tries to get the girl to visit Andy before the difficult surgery to cheer up the boy who is in love with her. It turns out that the girl also likes him, but she refuses to go to him because of her friend's ridicule. Kelly is disappointed in Lola's decision and warns her that she will later hate herself for her action. Despite Meredith's pleas, Derek does not want to perform the surgery on Beth. The neurosurgeon fears he'll lose another patient and doesn't want to be a doctor that loses all his patients. He accuses his colleague of being overly egotistical and refuses to work with her any further. Back in the operating room, Dr. Torres informs Andy that she has failed to find Lola. The boy guesses that the girl has refused to visit him. He tells the doctor that they often spent time together before the accident and once came close to kissing. Before removing the last bits of concrete from the boy, 
Dr. Bailey briefs the boy on the consequences. Because of the accumulated toxins in his body, his heart may stop and he will lose the ability to breathe for a while. The doctor immediately reassures the frightened Andy and promises that her colleagues will instantly restart his heart and hook him up to a ventilator. The construction workers then remove the last piece of concrete and the doctors immediately begin resuscitating the patient. Dr. Gray attends another counseling session. She doesn't believe the therapist claims that her mother didn't want to end her life. During the conversation, the woman recalls her last conversation with her mother, in which she asked her daughter not to be a mediocre woman. It was because of this admonition that Meredith decided to become a surgeon, just like her mother. The therapist tells the patient that her professional skills will help her find a clue, and soon she'll figure it out for herself. Alex takes Rebecca to the hospital with her wrist slit. He tells Izzy to bring him saline solution and suture material so that he can take care of his girlfriend himself. The girl can no longer turn a blind eye to her colleague's reckless behavior and tells him that Rebecca must be hospitalized urgently and seen by a psychiatrist. This infuriates Alex and, emotionally, he insults Izzy for meddling. The doctors manage to resuscitate Andy and they proceed with the surgery. After the unpleasant incident with Alex, Izzy comes to her supervisor, Dr. Bailey, for advice. She recounts Rebecca's attempt to harm herself and says that Karev has completely lost control of his emotions. The woman advises the girl to be tough and act like a professional who has a duty to help a sick patient. During Andy's operation, the surgeons discover a blockage in his pulmonary artery and his condition begins to deteriorate. Junior cardiac surgeon Christina Young convinces her colleagues to perform a thoracotomy to gain quick access to the patient's chest and gain precious time. Back in the operating room, Erica Hahn tries to find errors in the resident's work and wants to take control of continuing the operation, but Christina sends the senior specialist away in a rude manner. In the end, Derek agrees to perform Beth's surgery. The doctor still doubts his abilities and is afraid of losing another patient. Beth senses his fear and admits to the neurosurgeon that she's scared, too. Fortunately, the clinical procedure goes well and the patient survives. However, until she regains consciousness, the danger still remains. After the cardiologists finish their part of the job, Richard Weber approaches them. He convinces Erica that she should trust Christina more and be a good teacher to her. Unintentionally overhearing their conversation, Young thanks the head doctor for his support. Despite Alex's protests, Izzy brings a psychiatrist to Rebecca. She warns the guy that she will call the police if he tries to take the sick woman home. Alex lashes out trying to convince his colleague that he can take care of his girlfriend on his own. In an emotional moment, he admits to Izzy that he used to take care of his mentally ill mother when he was a child. Realizing her friend has been through hell in the past, the girl stops him and asks him to calm down. Dr. Torres meets Lola in the hallway, who has spent all night in the waiting room. Relieved, Kelly tells the girl that Andy's surgery was a success. When the boy regains consciousness, Lola decides to enter his room after all, gently running her hands through the boy's hair. She gives him the long-awaited kiss. Alex walks into Rebecca's room and reveals the truth about her past. The girl's ex-husband left her months ago, taking their child with him. She was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and the illness began to accelerate rapidly after the ferry accident. Rebecca went through plastic surgery and a change in her appearance, after which a new identity, Eva, emerged in her mind. Eventually Alex admits to her and to himself that he is unable to give her the help she needs. As they bid farewell, Rebecca apologizes to her boyfriend for her failure to be a better person for him. Upon entering the resident's common room, Meredith discovers puddles of red liquid on the kitchen floor and proceeds to vigorously dispose of it. Later, she encounters Richard Weber in the hospital corridor, who learns that Shepard performed Beth's experimental surgery without his consent. The young woman is in a bad mood and doesn't want to listen to the head doctor's lectures. Instead, Meredith blames the man for the fact that her mother tried to kill herself after he left her. Suddenly the girl realizes what the psychiatrist has been trying to communicate to her all along. At the seance, Meredith tells the therapist that Alice Gray was a great surgeon. If the woman really wanted to end her life, she wouldn't have cut her wrist. She would have taken a scalpel and cut her carotid artery. Meredith's mother didn't want to pass away, she just wanted Richard's attention so that he would come back to her. Unfortunately, Dr. Weber never found out what happened, and Alice Gray was too proud to call him back. The psychiatrist advises Meredith to learn from her mother's mistakes and not to deny herself the chance to be an extraordinary happy woman. Reviewing new scans of Beth's brain, Dr. Gray notes with delight that the girl's tumor has begun to shrink. Her colleague congratulates her on her great medical breakthrough. Meredith rushes to share her happiness with Derek, but finds neither him nor the celebratory bottle of champagne. As he passes Beth's room, Dr. Shepard hears her parents crying softly. When he enters the room, he is relieved to find that the girl has regained consciousness. With tears in her eyes, she greets the doctor and informs him that she can now move her arm. After the good news, Derek takes the champagne from the trash and rushes to meet his girlfriend. After enduring a tough day, 
Dr. Miranda Bailey decides to entrust the keys to the surgical ward to her underling, Izzy. The woman wants to get her family life back on track and acknowledges to her colleague that she is the only one who she can trust the clinic with. Another day at the Seattle Gray Clinic comes to an end. Thanks to Mark's support, Richard Weber goes to his wife and declares that he wants to go back home. He no longer wants to choose between his career and his family, and convinces his beloved that he will be as good a husband as he is a doctor. Izzy supports a devastated Alex and he kisses the girl back, begging her to stay with him for the night. Derek finds Meredith outside her trailer. She has made a plan out of candles, of their future home on the lot he was going to sell. The girl is angry at her boyfriend for not coming home for a long time, and she was in such a hurry to let him know that she wants them be the most unremarkable couple in the hospital with him again. Derek interrupts Meredith's exasperation with a long kiss. What's the most desperate thing you would do to impress the man you like? Write your answer in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video.